Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryland Darling Show. Today is Sunday, the 30th of June, and every month I go through and I clean my pens that I'm using for the month, and I either choose to put them in new pens, or I use the same pens, but give them like a clean slate for cleaning. So, these are the pens that I'm going to be cleaning today. And so, we have the Twisby Eco, which I'm still using for today's journal entry, so that won't be done until tomorrow. This is the calligraphy pen that I got with my Christmas present. And it has yellow ink in it, which I'm thinking about keeping in this pen, because I like the boldness of ink. So, everything has to be cleaned out and put in a new. This is a Jinhao 992 with, an, with a hooded extra fine nib. This is a Lamy Vista <coughs> with a black fine nib. This is a Jinhao 599 with a 1.1 millimeter stub. This is a Y Ren, that's Y I R E N 401 with a rainbow extra fine Lamy style nib. And this is a Wing Sung 618 with a hooded fine nib. So, Okay. Put all of these inks back in their little containers because they haven't been mixed or anything like that, except the yellow one and the Twisby because I think I'm going to keep those in there because they seem to be doing very well where they are now. Um, so these ones I'm going to clean out and we're going to put them in some new pens. Um, first we have to get the ink out, and in order to keep things clean, I have a mat that I bought from the Dollar Tree, and it's, let me make it away, it's bending in the wrong direction. Okay, so that, that's better. Put a mat down. Out the vials. I have to put the ink back in too. Um, we're gonna start with this red one. Why not? I know that everyone is screaming at me in the comments right now. Don't do that. It's naughty. Well, you know what? We all have the ability to make our own choices in life, and I've chosen to put the ink back in its bottle because. It's just where I want it to go, so. Okay, as soon as I've got it out a sufficient amount, close it up. Right over to one side, oops. Move on to the next bin. This one is the Y-Ren 401, and they're all dirty, like this, the, the nib and the, everything will have to be washed. So I made this brown out of using red, red, black, and orange, um, red, black, yellow, red, black, and yellow food uh, colors. So. that I made the brown ink in. This is the brown that I made. So take the ink, open her up, make sure she's on a hard surface. Change in, suck up as much ink as you can because 
because he is precious. Bing. Wipe it off. Close the tube. Replace the cartridge. Replace the body. Snap the cap. Move on to the next one. Um, this is the Lamy. No, this is the Jinhao 599. And in here we have the Thiamine Deep Magenta. And before we can we have to clean the needle. I cleaned the needle. And still going. Good. Stop. Um, shut up, computer. I'm busy. Body back on. Cap. Move on to the next one. Cap. Money. To begin with, place those in body. On to the last one. So this one was the only one that I think that I did a fancy clean, maybe. Oh dear, I don't remember if I did or not. forget you should keep a, a diary of what inks that you use this one is Yosemite green in the Jinhao 992 okay good so this is Yosemite green and I'm glad I didn't put it back in here because that would have made a mess so I'm going to keep this in this pen so I'm just going to put that down Fuckery. Slip it as much as I can. Um, I'll put my mess. Okay, now we're gonna go over to the sink and we're gonna wash all these pens out. Now, most pen enthusiasts will tell you that you should wash out your pens at least once a month keep them running in optimal conditions. 
So we have our this. We have a small bulb syringe. We got with it. We have a large bulb syringe. So little part. You never know. We move to one side. Watch out the converter. You want to do this with warm water? That's it. Well, work better with warm water. Now, fill your cartridges, especially if you have you get little hard spots, little hard to reach spots right in the edge, and just kind of leave them there because that will get out the squish. Now, sometimes you'll be able to get away with using a small, uh, a smaller thing where you just kind of and sometimes you'll have to use the large one, so. Into there. And don't press too hard, just hard enough to brush away the brick wall. to keep things from going down your sink, you should probably have a piece of cheesecloth. I have here a piece of cheesecloth that I bought from the 99 cent store. And I just kind of shove it down there like that. And I pull the nib and the feet out. Real easy, like. And we're gonna feed a good washing. And then I have one of these little shot glasses. I fill the shot glass with water. Put the feed in one. Another shot glass. Put the nib in it. Wash. Just to one side. Next pen. Now make sure that you do the caps too because sometimes Dunky gets in the caps and if your finial is screwed on it can erode the screw and the, the finial will fall off. And I'm not exactly sure about how difficult it is to replace things like that but I don't imagine that it would be very easy. So. Just be aware of that. Sometimes they don't want to come out, and you need to use like a rubber grip or some sort of grippier substance than that. Gonna happen. 
There's not much you can do about it except for just, you know, with a towel, cheese cloth, and wipe it up. Okay. Have a normally large piece of cheese cloth. Should have cut it in half, but I didn't really plan to use the cheese cloth for pen purposes. It just happened that that's what I had at the time. And it wiped the water through a little bit and kept things from falling down my sink. So. Need in one, nib in the other. Sometimes you'll find that you might need a little bit of soap. I mean, if you're... If your feet has been used for a month and it and it basically looks like clear, then you should be good. So we'll just leave that to the side. Should we wash out the barrel and the cap. Okay, now these are a little more tricky, the hooded nibs, because some of them screw off, like this Wingsung 618. And you have a little tiny nib, and a, a nib housing, and then a feed. The feed is weird, comes apart, and so it's just a big mess. It's a lot of ink that's come off there, but that's okay. Feed, nib. Now some of these you can pull apart, you know, and just wash them out real good, but... Sometimes you want to rub the, uh... Especially with these piston ones, you gotta leave the water in there for a little while because sometimes they need some time to so you know, prop it up on a prop it up on a thing over here so you could just let it soak for a little bit. I got a couple more and then that'll be done. Okay, so I'm gonna wash the rest of these out and um section.
And sometimes, if you're really, really lucky, they'll be so clean and clear that you won't have to take the feet out. So, that is super nice. Because taking the, the feed, the nib and feed out with a pair of pliers really isn't the way to go. But that's what I have, and it doesn't seem to damage the pen as far as I can tell. So, that's what's happening with that. Some take longer than others. Usually hooded nibs take the longest to wash out because there's a lot more going on. So and sometimes with the Jinho 992 hooded nibs, you can't take the nib and feed out. So you just kind of have to squirt you know, until you get clear water. Finding that after a good five minutes of running water through it, that it's not pairing up, you can use some of them. That usually fixes it. Or soak the nib and feed in water. This is very labor intensive, very back breaking work. So, it takes time to wash these out and take care of them every month. And you know, make sure that they're all ready to go for brand new ink and whatnot. So, I mean, some people they just. They don't care about their pens enough. And, like, I don't put mine in a case, but yeah, I like my pens and I want them to run nicely. If they're not running smoothly, then a waste of money and they go in the trash or they go in a drawer somewhere to collect dust. So, Vata is a Vata. Especially on the nibs that you can't see the feed, they have to take a little bit of extra time to wash them out. So, and if you get tired, take a break. Everyone deserves a break. This is labor intensive. My back is killing me. So, it's good enough to me. So, I'm gonna put that there. Wash the net, wash the caps out. Sorry. Make sure you wash the caps out good and dry them good. That's 
one key to good maintenance for your pens. And so there are the pens that I've washed today. And now I'm going to let these soak or unink themselves. And then I'm going to put them back together and put new inks in them for the month. And that will be tomorrow's vlog. So thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. I love you. Bye. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryland Dollar Show. Today I'm going to show you how to how I fill my pens for the month. Um, and um, show you kind of like what what happens. So, first of all, I go through and I decide which of the pens that I want to use for the month. And these are all of the fountain pens that I have, that I own. And I get seven colors for the week, for each day of the week. And so I have to decide on what I want to use them on. So this is a Noodler's Conrad. I'm going to be honest, I very much dislike this pen. It's a pain in the ass to write with. Maybe perhaps if it came with a non-flexible nib, it would be tolerable, but I just, I can't stand it. So, if anybody wants a Noodler's Conrad, please let me know. I'll send this horrible thing to you and you can deal with it. So, <clears throat> there. Um, so, I'm going to be showing you how I fill my pens. These are the Pilot Parallels. And in this one, I have... I think I have green, blue. I have blue. So, this month's for the Pilot Parallel is going to be Monteverde Caribbean Blue. And that's that. This one I think is green. This one is Mermaid Tail by Jane Davenport. So, but I won't be using these on a daily basis because you can't write with a very thick line on. All right, so those go over there. Um, this is the Jen Howe. 250 and it's a very heavy pen it's got a fine nib and it's gorgeous but it's also a pain in my ass because the heaviness is just insane it's very crampy so that also goes over there and this is what is left so this is what i have to work with and I've got these colors over here, and I've got those colors over there. So, let's see. I already have a couple of colors from last month, and it's best to write everything down on a note card. So, I already have yellow in my, um, my bold, so I've got yellow in this one, I've got black in this one, and I've got blue in this one. These were ones that I had. And then I have yellow, uh, orange in my Twisby Eco. So that's nice. Um, I'm gonna label this month's as July 2019 and it usually goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, rainbow colors. So in here is 
Apache Sunset. So I will write in the second space Twisby Ego Finib uh, Noodlers Apache Sunset. And that will be the yellow for the month. At least until I run out, which is going to be pretty soon. So, that would be my orange for the month. This is the yellow one that I've chosen for the month. This is, um, this is my calligraphy pen and it is failing me right now. I'll try them at my feet a little bit. Maybe that'll help it out. This one goes through more ink than I am. Carter has liver pills. Okay, and uh, oh dear, it's got some gunk, some gunk build up. So I'm gonna have to wash this with a little bit of water. gunky things in there. Okay. Tip it upside down. Um, calligraphy with a 1.5 stub in in sunrise. Okay, that is yellow for the month. And then it usually goes green and then blue. So this is Monteverdi Caribbean blue. Green and blue. So this is the Wingsung is this the wing song? Yes, the wing song three zero zero eight. Uh, come on, you know you wanna. Fine nib. Oh, it says extra fine. Extra fine me. Extra fine nib. The color is Caribbean blue. Okay. A little shoddy to begin with, but it's a brand new pen, so give me it a go. Yeah, and I got shit everywhere. Whatever. That's fine. Now then. <clears throat> the next pen that I'm going to ink up is one of these pens here. I haven't quite decided what I want to put in what. But I would like to use some of my Jen Hao pens because they are some of the best writers. So I've got three here and four here. Um, I, I also want to use my stub nib. And I want to use my Lamy. So... Yeah. I think those will go away for a month. That'll be fine. Um, now it's a choice between my Lamy, my Jin Hao, my Jin Hao, my Jin Hao, 
my Monteverdi and my Monteverdi. So, um, which is a which? Oh, this is black. So, blue, purple, brown, black. Jin Hao, nine, nine, two. In let's see, fine nib. Oh, this is a Monteverdi. Oops, crap. Always read your pens. Now we can resume. I uh, am going to do a uh, whisper, Robert Oster, whisper red in this pen. This is a Jin Hao 992. It's one of the more basic pens. It's got a fine nib, maybe a medium nib. No, it says fine. So, got a fine nib. We're going to put Robert Oster in this one. So, what did I do with my syringe? Maybe still over the sink. Okay. Well, we got less than a mil left, so. I have to make this count as much as possible because who knows how much I'll get out of it. Seriously? Oh my god. Probably not going to have enough for the month, but that's okay. This motherfucker just squirted all over. Uh, note to self, don't shake the damn thing around too much. Anyway, so, that is Robert Oster, Whisper Red. I'm going to move it right up to the point. And I think I've changed my mind all of a sudden. I'm going to put it in the Jinhao 992 with the hooded nib because that'll make it last longer. Take out the section. Make sure everything is dried off real good. Drop is a drop, folks. Okay, so there. Now that I've dealt with that little blender. Okay. This is the Hard on hand just to get out the 
moisture. Okay, th this obviously isn't working out very well. So I'm gonna instead put Jin Hao uh, Monteverdi Valentine Red in this pen instead. So that's good. Gonna put let's see which looks better. I think this one. This one's a medium nib though. Hmm. I need a green. start with Yosemite green and end with possibly rune green. Pain in the ass. Okay. I've got two colors left. Two colors left for the month. What are they gonna be? What are they gonna be, George? What are they gonna be? One, two, three, four, five. Two colors left. Maybe I won't use these. Nope, I don't think I will. I think I'm gonna use the others. Because I really like the Lamy. Even this, even though this is a Monteverdi. Anyway, these go over here. I'm going to use the Jin Hao 599. Two. To suck up some herbal or maybe I will use the Monteverdi sapphire I think I will I will use the sapphire for purple this month so let's be very careful I'm gonna go change the
Tá bom. And a green. We need a green. So the green is going in here. Use up the rest of this Monteverde Yosemite green. I'll wash my thing off. I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna put the Yosemite green into the Lamy Vista. But one really cool thing about demonstrator pens is you can see what's going on inside of them. And I think that that is so cool. So. There isn't very much of this left, so I have to be a spill any of it. Okay, I'm gonna do a daring thing. <laughs> I'm gonna finish it up with this one. Cool. That was a bold thing to do. Make some noodlers. And shake it up a little bit. And at least if it doesn't come out nice, it's only like one milliliter of ink. What the fuck is wrong with this piece of shit? To be continued. I got it to work. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so there. Cool. So I have seven colors for seven different days of the week. And these will be all of the colors that I use for the next month. Unless I run out of ink in the pen for that month. So I hope that was terrifyingly educational for you. Um, 
Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. I love you. Bye. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryland Dolling Show. Today is July 1st, and <clears throat> I wanted to, one, show you my ink collection, and um, two, show you how to use a stencil to do your journal entries. Um, these are the stencils that I currently have. And, oops, sorry, my fat head's in the way. I didn't think this through. <clears throat> so, let me see. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryland Darling Show. Today is the 1st of July, and today I wanted to show you my <clears throat> stencils that I have. These are the only stencils that I have so far. <clears throat> and um, I wanted to show you how to use stencils so that way in case that you ever wanted to, you didn't know how to use them, but you could <clears throat> use them in a pinch to do some writing or something like that. Sorry, I had to go looking for the one pencil that I have. <clears throat> so, I prefer to first do a stencil in pencil because you can erase pencil, but you can't erase most ink types of things. So, the way that you use a stencil is you put whatever you want to write on underneath the stencil. Make sure that it, you can read it, because some people do it like this, <clears throat> which is upside down. And unless you're making a mirror message for somebody, then the only way I could see that would be useful is if you're putting a mirror behind a, a vanity mirror, a message behind a vanity mirror, because then it would say the, the correct way instead of being I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> so today is uh, July 1st, and so I'm going to write July on this piece of paper. So I'm going to hold it down with a kind of a very tight grip, <clears throat> and I'm going to trace out all of the lines. Of this here stencil and try not to bend it because a lot of people bend the little bits and then they become unuseful. <clears throat> there ladies and gentlemen we have a J and you know you can go in and recolor it unless you have one that's made from like in a ruler type of material which those are are my favorite. They're more rigid. You can, you know, <clears throat> squiggle back and forth in them more. But, and then I go J U July. Can you all see that? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, 
I hope that was educational to you. I hope that you guys have um, some stencils in your collection that possibly you can use. Um, because it's firework month, I'm going to make a little firework right there. And maybe another one up here. And try, try to be gentle with your stencils because sometimes they're very cheaply made. And you want them to last a long time. These are very flimsy, as you can see. So, <clears throat> these are very flimsy. Um, and that's really all I have to say about these. Um, I got this one from Wish.com. Uh, I got it in a cursive because I thought, oh, that would be cool. But then I found out how difficult it was to do all of the little bits and not break them because they're so cheaply made. And, like, you just have to be very careful with them because they will bend and they will break and... Especially the little bits that hold the other bits in place. Like these little bits here, they are so tiny. So just be careful if you're gonna make a sign or anything. So anyway, I'm, let's go into my bullet journal. Or into this month's journal. <clears throat> and um, we're not gonna use the cursive one this month. We're just gonna use the regular one. Because this paper, this is like a really big stencil. I mean, it's 35 millimeters. The long length and like 20 millimeters thick. So it's very thick. don't fit on the top one. The J doesn't fit. So I'm going to use a little stencil today. <coughs> I have one for the top, one for the lowercase, uppercase, lowercase. <laughs> Okay. Also helps if you keep your pencil at a 90 degree angle, straight up and down. July 2019. There. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all for today. So thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Love you. Bye.